नमस्ते माँ नमस्ते बेटा माई सेल्फ स्नेहा अरोरा एन अफिलियट ऑफ द योगा इंस्टीट्यूट विच इज द ओल्डेस्ट स्कूल ऑफ योगा इन द वर्ल्ड इज हेयर वेरी वेरी प्रिविलेज टू डिस्कस विद माँ हंसा जी द डायरेक्टर ऑफ द योगा इंस्टीट्यूट टूडे एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑन योगा एंड इट्स फिलोसफी माँ a lot of our students outside of india and in the world want to know a couple of questions want to know about more about yoga philosophy as the subject is growing more and more its awareness is growing more and more sure so uh what i'd like to ask you is that in this modern world there are so many distractions mm -hmm. and uh, a yoga sutra has been written on that by patanjali could you please explain to everybody the importance of the sutra Yoga, Chitta, Vritti, Nirodha, and its importance in our lives today. Okay, Sneha, that's a very good question because this is the definition of yoga. Yoga, Chitta, Vritti, Nirodha. That is complete mastery over mind is yoga. Chitta's job is to think, so mind is going to think, and mind will think. That's how it is structured. but then what type of a thinking thinking just going on like that without any purpose is wrong stop it nirodha so we have to understand this word very clearly yoga means union union of yourself with object of concentration so yoga means concentration and if concentration is prolonged little further it is dhyan meditation and if that is prolonged further and it becomes one with the object of concentration you become one with that object and that is samadhi so one is yuja samadho that is how yoga is put forward now this is yoga chitta what is chitta in english we can use the word mind but mind is a very little part of chitta chitta is a very big thing chitta is about 17 components yogi is going to the detail of life 17 components we have five organs of perception from which we get knowledge through eyes through ears okay through everything so i am not going to those details five organs of perception then five organs of action hands leg speech okay then five energy sources prana pancha prana everywhere if some activity is going on energy is required so five types of prana which part the prana is used that part also is mentioned then our man mind which is a coordinator now to explain this if i want to look at you my mind should go there near my eyes behind my eyes then i can see you if mind is somewhere else even if my eyes are open i won't be able to see you perfectly i'm sure this you must have experience isn't it yes. our mind is constantly running elsewhere but we are yes. just physically there yes i want to hear something but mind is somewhere else so even if you say hello i won't be able to hear that so such experiences we do have so that is mind mind is a coordinator wherever you want to do the action mind will be there wherever mind goes action is done perfectly otherwise no so this is mind mana and behind mana is ahankar my desire to see my eye sense to see i want to look at you so my mind will be with my eyes and so i will look at you if my desire is not there still nothing will work so all this component five gyanendriya five karmendriya five pran man and ahankar i said all this together is chitta now in english we use the word mind so we will use the mind always but this is chitta where is mind mind is everywhere every cell has intelligence so mind is everywhere and mind has a capacity it can go in a fraction of a second to america or to russia There is no problem. It less like that. That is mind. Mind has tremendous capacity. Such type of capable mind. Yogis are telling stop. Why? Why should they do that? Nirodha means stop. Stop it. Now, this doesn't mean 
that the mind has to stop that we we live just without mind without mind a person is mad <laughs> person has to use his mind to do his work but when there is no job mind is just moving on its own thoughts are just coming without any purpose that mind has to stop that's why that is possible only when i have full mastery over mind full control over mind and so that is the definition chitta vritti nirodha yes. complete mastery over mind yes. in fact this reminds me once i asked dr jaydev how we can you know uh, stop overthinking and you know not use the mind uh, more than required and he said that anything that you cannot act upon immediately is not worth thinking about correct so this was his answer very i still good, remember very good very good <laughs> So, it's not worth thinking. Worth so thinking. why are you thinking? Stop your mind. Absolutely. So, Hansaji, talking more about distractions, uh, this is a very, very common question. Most students, especially, there's an American culture everywhere where they want to have coffee and go for a yoga class to teach, and yoga teachers are doing that as well. I was very, very surprised. There was an article once by Yoga Alliance saying that uh, this is the life of a yoga teacher. and it was written that uh, they are taking one cup of coffee going and teaching the next class taking another cup of coffee teaching another class which is completely opposite of what is done traditionally and caffeine is avoided and you often say that stimulation is not required and a fellow you know student or a friend he just messaged me is this true is this article true i said not at all this is published somewhere in the west where they follow this culture of drinking coffee and going to teach asana class when they are highly stimulated it's not so in the traditional method so hansa ji could you please throw some light about use of coffee deha you are also a teacher and you are teaching in west also quite a lot what about your coffee yes. i remember <laughs> so hansa ji is reminding me of a day in 2019 we were together i was assisting ma at her uh, retreat in europe and uh, I used to drink coffee once in a while and uh, influenced by cultures around I would take coffee but Hansa ji just reminded me once saying that you are a yoga teacher and you know what it does to your body and that line made me coffee free since then so I can vouch for it that if you seriously take your guru's uh, teachings you can definitely come on to the path of being caffeine free one one advice I'll give to people people will say that what is this one advice that all these things are habit forming things if you don't get then your brain doesn't work you don't get you don't wake up habit forming things are wrong that is dependency otherwise once in a while you are with group people nothing is available you need something or taking coffee no problem it is once in a while don't get too much fanatic about anything in life everything has its own place in the world but among the whole group of stimulants tea coffee fine once in a while everything is okay only not habit forming yes. without that if you have anything else available take that if not available go ahead correct so hansa ji is trying to say that not to use caffeine as a dependent where right. you have to you cannot function without it you cannot wake up without it or go and teach a class or go for a class to practice without it so dependency is not right as it will create further distraction and stimulation for the mind very true yes thank you so much hansa ji for today's guidance and we shall see you again in the next episode welcome